Hello, I'm Jaron. Let's explore ambient house music. House music has two key features, a tempo in the area of 120 beats per minute and a kick drum that plays quarter notes, also referred to as four on the floor. Ambient music features effects that create space, such as reverb and delay, and tends to be built around one chord or scale. This loop features four main instruments, an electric piano, drums, bass, and guitar. The electric piano sound is produced by Ableton's Electric, a device that emulates the two classic electric pianos, the Fender Rhodes and the Wurlitzer. These instruments were invented in the 1950s, gained popularity in the decades that followed, and are still used today. The design combines the mechanics of a piano with the signal processing of an electric guitar. The piano keys set a hammer into motion that strikes a piece of metal rather than a string. Instead of resonating acoustically, the sound is produced by a magnetic pickup and an amplifier. The resulting sound is definitively electronic, but stops shy of a synthesizer's sonic territory. Electric has three main groups of controls. Hammer, which strikes the fork. Fork, the metal that vibrates and creates the tone. And pickup, which amplifies the vibrations of the fork. Stiffness controls the hardness of the hammer's striking area. At 100%, the sound is thin and bright. At 0%, the sound is quiet and dark. Set stiffness to 25% for a sound that is mellow but retains volume. Noise controls the volume of the hammer's impact. The higher the percentage, the louder the noise becomes. At 0%, the hammer noise is muted. Set noise to 0% to hear only the pure tone. Tyne introduces harmonics. At higher percentages, the added harmonics result in a brighter sound. Set time to 0%. The mellow tones are better suited to the ambient style. Tone controls the amplitude of the fork. At 100%, the sound is loud and aggressive. At 0%, the sound is quiet and gentle. Set the tone to 35% for a mellow but full sound. Symmetry adjusts the vertical position of the pickup. At 100%, the sound is an octave lower than when set to 0%. Set to 65%. Set to 65% for a sound that agrees with our ambient purposes. R and W correspond to the two different types of electric pianos, R for Rhodes and W for Wurlitzer. In this loop, electric plays a minor 11 chord arpeggiated in 16th notes that repeats every bar. Use note echo to repeat the notes of the chord. Set delay time to 3 16th notes. Feed delay sets the velocity of the repeated notes. Set this to 50%. A normal echo or delay effect would repeat the audio. Note echo repeats the MIDI note, making it possible to change the pitch of the notes as they repeat. The pitch of the repeating notes can be altered in semitones using the pitch setting. The pitch alterations do not follow any key or chord and quickly become chromatic nonsense. 
To avoid this, use the Scale MIDI effect. Scale allows you to select which notes all incoming MIDI get filtered into. Configure Scale to only include the notes of your chord. My chord is F minor 11. I set the bass to F, the root of my chord. The notes in this chord are F, G, A flat, B flat, C, and E flat. You can also use Scale's presets. I recommend starting with minor pentatonic if scales are new to you. Now as the MIDI notes repeat at different pitches, they get quantized into the notes we selected with scale. Use LFO to modulate the pitch setting and keep the pattern evolving. Click Map and then the parameter you want to modulate. In this case, Note Echo's pitch parameter. Change the LFO waveform to random. Pitch will now jump to new values rather than smoothly transitioning between them. Change time mode to beat sync. Set it to one bar to get a new pitch setting every bar. Set the offset to 100%. This makes the pitch of the repeated notes higher than that of the initial chord. Duplicate note echo. Change the second one to another time interval. Map the LFO to the pitch of the second note echo. Change the range max to 50% so that each note echo's pitch parameters are different from one another. There are now two different sets of echoes, one every 3 16th notes and one every 6 16th notes, each with a different pitch setting that changes each bar. This creates an evolving cloud of notes. Use spectral time to blur the sound. Spectral time has a freezing function that can be set to a synced time interval. Set the freezer to re-trigger mode. Set the re-trigger mode to sync and set interval to 5 16th notes. Activate the freezer. Crossfade blends between the different freezes. Set crossfade to 50%. Spectral time has a built-in delay. Change time mode to 16th notes. Set delay time to 3 16th notes. Set stereo to 100%. Set the frequency resolution to ultra. This creates a blurry watercolor version of the sound. Set the dry wet to 50% to retain some of the clarity of the original sound. Next, add Ableton's hidden vibrato effect. Add chorus ensemble. Switch to the vibrato function. Set the rate to five. Lower the amount to 5%. Set the low cut to 450 hertz. Set warmth to 10%. Vibrato adds motion to the pitch and further blurs the sound. Continue to carve out the desired frequencies. Add auto filter. Set frequency to 500 hertz. Set resonance to 30%. Change the filter slope to 12. This combined with the vibrato's low cut creates a bandpass that accentuates the mids of the sound. Let's create another dimension to this sound. Send electric sound to a second audio track. Select Post Effects so that the sound includes all the manipulation and processing. Set Monitor to In and Solo the track. Add Beat Repeat. Set Offset to 8 sixteenths. This creates a repeated pattern of 16th notes built from the signal received on beat 3, which is displayed here as 2. Activate the filter to further subdue the sound. Turn the decay to 35% to reduce the volume of each repeated 16th note, which creates a fade. Beat repeat has three modes. Mix mode blends the repetitions with the original signal, as we have been hearing.
insert mode mutes the original signal when repetitions are playing. Gate mode only plays the repetitions. Select gate mode so that only the repetitions are played on this track, while the original signal is played on the initial electric track. To give the repetitions a smoother attack, add a utility and use Shaper to automate the gain parameter. Using the same method as the LFO, click Map, and then select the gain parameter. Set the maximum to 60%. Set the rate to quarter note. Set the grid to 8 to create a larger drawing area. Draw a shape that starts at 0, then rises and falls back to zero before the next quarter note. Add dots by clicking in the grid. Click while holding shift to delete dots. Holding down the alt slash option key will let you bend the shape. Let's enhance the ambient texture. Add echo. Unlink the left and right channels. Set the left delay to eighth and the right delay to quarter. Set feedback to 80%. Change the filter modulation to 100%. Set the modulation rate to 0.03 Hz. Change the stereo amount to 200%. Set the dry wet mix to 50%. Add hybrid reverb. Set the algorithm to shimmer. This adds a higher octave to the reverb tail. Change the mode to parallel. Set blend to 100% algorithm. Change the pre-delay to zero. Set the dry wet mix to 25%. Duplicate this track. Command D is the shortcut for duplicate. Pan one track hard left and the other hard right. Adjust the duplicated track's beat repeat offset to zero so that the repetitions start on beat one rather than three. Now a chain of repetitions begins every two beats, alternating from left to right. Let's manipulate electric once more. Send the initial electric track to a fourth track. This time select pre-effects to bypass all the manipulation and processing. Set monitor to in and solo the track. Add a utility and shaper to create another volume swell. Map the shaper to utilities gain. Set the maximum to 50%. Change the rate to 16 bars. Set the grid to 16. Draw a shape that increases and decreases over the course of 3 bars, and then does nothing for 13 bars. Add echo and hybrid reverb so that once the volume swell stops, the sound keeps ringing. Add compressor. Sidechain the compressor to the kick drum to achieve a pumping quality on every beat. Using EQ3, deactivate the lows and highs. Add auto pan. Set the rate to move the sound from left to right every 3 16th notes. Here's all four electric tracks together.
Let's put the drums together. Create an empty drum rack. Add the kick drum synth. Create a MIDI clip and put a kick on every beat. This loop is in the key of F minor, so tune the kick to F. Change the decay to 25%. This creates a long enough sound to clearly establish the pulse, but short enough to leave room for other bass instruments. Set drive to 33%. Set overtone to 27.5%. Set envelope to 100%. Change the volume to negative 8. Add an auto filter to the kick chain by dragging it directly onto the kick pad. Set the frequency to 170 Hz. Change the resolution to 30%. This creates a muted thud sound. Add the hi-hat drum synth. Put a hi-hat on every eighth note in between the kicks. Set tone to 0%. Set attack to 10%. Change pitch to 83%. Set decay to 3.7%. Change the volume to negative 12. This achieves a short high pitch sound. Add hybrid reverb to the hi-hat chain. Change the convolution reverb to early reflections, comb space to change the size to 50%. This adds short repetitions that blur the sound and create dimension. Set the algorithmic reverb to quartz. Change mod to 100%. This algorithm introduces modulation to the reverb tail. Add the cymbal drum synth. Put a cymbal on beats 2 and 4 to create a subtle backbeat. Set tone to 50%. Change pitch to 31%. Set decay to 61%. Change volume to negative 26. This achieves a thick wash of sound. Add hybrid reverb to the cymbal chain. Set to parallel and blend to 100% algorithmic. Change the algorithm to shimmer. Set decay to about 5.3. Change the dry wet mix to 60%. This will give us more of the cymbal wash than the clear sound. Add the snare drum synth. Put a snare on beats 2 and 4. Change color and tone to 0%. Set decay to about 3.15%. Change tune to 0%. This produces a sound that really isn't a snare at all. It's a small click that we can use for subtle emphasis. Add a hybrid reverb to the snare chain. Set blend to 100% convolution. Change the convolution impulse response to early reflections, wood room. This will add some air to the sound. Cut the low frequencies of the reverb tail to about 300 hertz. Set the dry wet mix to 20%. Here's how the electric piano and drum tracks sound together. I recorded the bass line with a fretless bass. Working with audio, don't overlook the transient loop modes. It has three modes, loop back and forth, which is the default mode, loop forward, and off mode. When set to off mode, the envelope can be used to shorten the sound of each transient. Set it to 25 and observe how the sound changes from a bass to something different. You can also change the granulation resolution from transients to a rhythmic value. There are many creative options here beyond standard warping and quantizing. Let's add an auto filter to the bass. Set frequency to 615 Hz. Change the resonance to 36%. Let's add some modulation. Set LFO to 15. Change the LFO rate to quarter note. 
Turn quantizing on so that the frequency modulation is beat synced and set the rate to 1. Turn the envelope all the way down to negative 127. To enhance the sub bass frequencies, double the bass with a synth. Add operator. Activate one oscillator. Set it to the lowest octave, displayed as 0.5. Deactivate all the notes of the bass line except for the notes that emphasize the beginning of the bar. Sidechain the sub bass to the kick to preserve the clarity of these sounds that overlap in the low end. Automate the decay parameter to create variation in the articulation of these notes. Here's how the two bass tracks sound together. Now let's hear the electric tracks, the bass, and the drums all together. Improvise until you find an interesting melody. I settled on this melody that I played on guitar. Add echo. Set the left and right delays to 1 eighth. Set the feedback to 87%. Change filter modulation to 100%. Change the modulation rate to 6 bars. Adjust the filter EQ to suit your instrument. Change the dry wet mix to 50%. Add hybrid reverb. Change the convolution impulse response to bigger spaces, shimmering sky, LR. This will create a long ambient stereo reverb tail. Set the algorithm to quartz to add modulation to the reverb tail. Increase modulation to 100%. Set the decay to about 4.36. Increase the distance parameter to 100%. This will increase the time between reverb reflections. Set the dry wet mix to 30% to maintain the clarity of your melody. Cut the low frequencies of the reverb tail to about 250 hertz. Layering a synth that's playing the exact same notes as your melody instrument can make it sound more electronic. Add wavetable. Adjust the attack and decay so that the synth sound blends with your main instrument. Add some subtle modulation so that the sound moves around different wave shapes, mimicking the way a real instrument naturally changes its tonal quality. <laughs> Here's how the guitar and synth sound together. The guitar chords are built in two pieces, the call and response. Each time the call is slightly different. This is also doubled by synths, achieved with three layers. The first layer plays the top note of the guitar part. Glide is enabled on this layer to mimic the sliding in the guitar part. The second synth layer doubles the other guitar notes without letting them ring as a chord.
The third synth layer removes the attacks and lets the chords ring out and overlap. Together, all three synth layers encapsulate what the guitar is playing. Blending synths with your instruments creates an electronic tone that is well suited to the ambient style. Here's how it all comes together. You can download the project file and presets on my Patreon page, which I have linked in the description. Thanks for watching.